You see, son, the first pretty girl of the night was always an indicator, a signal. You look for this back in the day when you was a young man, because this was the one thing that could change your entire being. That could turn your nature. What do you tell investors when trying to raise money for a risky proposition like not only a film, but an Asian American film? Um, you kind of have to tell them it's risky because you, quite honestly, the, the, the chances of actually making a lot of money on films like this are, are, are pretty small. Um, so there, there's, there's a couple of things that you, you, know, you, you can uh, really try to, to, to embody in your pitch. And uh, you know, those things are things like, you know, the, this is, uh, the, the people involved in the film are people that um, uh, you know, have the talent and you want to give them an opportunity to, you know, so, so it's kind of a, a, uh, a cause kind of thing, you know, not only for the filmmakers, but for Asian American film in general. Um, you hope that you can appeal to their creative sensibilities in terms of, you know, this is a film that uh, they would like to see. Uh you never pull shit? Yeah, maybe not drunk. Man, you taught me this. It's not right. And you know it. And you think you can come back here and undo the past. There's no cage here. Um, and, you know, with films like this, I mean, I don't want to get into the details of budgets and things like that. You know, with a, an Asian American community uh, that does go out and support films, uh, you know, one of the things that you can tell them is, you know, from a risk perspective, if you've got a, a filmmaker that, that you know will be able to at least complete the film and make a good film, that the, you know, being able to at least recoup their money uh, is something that you can expect through, you know, limited theatrical distribution or DVD sales or overseas sales, those kinds of things. Um, but it is tough, like I mentioned, it took us three years to raise the money for this film. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it, it's something that uh, you really just have to hope you hit the right people or organizations that, that want to see films like this get created for whatever reasons. What do you know? Breaking into cars for stereos? What do you think? But you know, one of the things that was really important to Chris was that we didn't shoot in HD just because of budgetary concerns. And he, 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 you know, in the four-year process that it took to make the film, three years of raising the money, and then the year to make the film, um, you know, we, we started out saying, "Well, we have to shoot this in film because HD is not there, all that kind of stuff." And then finally, like you know, right when we were, you know, finalizing uh, the investors, Chris kind of said, "You know what?" Um, I've been looking into a lot of this HD stuff, and I think I can, uh, you know, I, I think it's reached a level that I, that I think is going to, you know, work. And I've got a lot of really cool visual ideas that I want to do that really take advantage of the format. You know, one of the problems that a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers, uh, go through is where they, they they think about HD, but they've been trained in film, so they try to make a an HD film that looks like film, right? But Chris kind of said, well, let's not limit ourselves to trying to make HD look like film. Let's let's really take advantage of the format, and, uh, and and let's go from there. So so you know it was a combination of a lot of things, but but I think in the end, it, um, shooting in HD really sort of lent itself to to the vision that Chris had. You know, I, obviously he may have had some different ideas if we were shooting on film. And you know, at one point we were you know in the three years of trying to raise the money, we were like, well, we might have to shoot this on mini DV, right? <laughs> so. You know, he had, he, he had gone through this great mental exercise of, you know, well, if we have these limitations, what are we going to, you know, what, what are we going to do to take advantage of that medium and make it the best, you know, the best visually stunning film that we can make. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's how that came about. Well, we, we had him assigned behind the scenes, um, a person on set, you know, through the whole shoot and, you know, interviews, things like that. We uh, will have a, I know Chris created something like four commentary tracks with, uh, you know, with Sung and with uh, 
uh, John DeFazio, the DP, and, and Carrie, the, the composer, and, uh, you know, I, I think Russell Wong even showed up for, for one of the recording sessions. But, you know, th th this is really a, a, a project of passion for, for Chris and for, you know, all the film, you know, the production people involved. And, um, you know, so yeah, documenting how they're doing it and things like that, you know, we, we've got, uh, on the DVD, I mean, the, the, the number of extras that I think we're going to have on it, deleted scenes, and, uh, you know, we've got like a music video, like Far East Movements, you know, contributed some music to it that we're going to do some music video stuff with. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that, you know, that uh, uh, we've prepared for the DVD.